Hello, everyone. I'm Yoko Kawashima, Strategic Partnership Manager here at Practice Better. And I'm joined here today by the lovely Lisa Fraley. Welcome back, Lisa. Thank you, Yoko. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you all may be familiar with Lisa already, but she is a legal coach and attorney for health coaches, licensed pr practitioners, and other health and wellness professionals. Uh, Lisa is a former corporate healthcare attorney and is a certified health coach herself. And she uniquely blends her legal expertise with her coaching background. I'm so excited to be co-hosting this webinar with you. Thank you. Thank you again. This is yes. great. So you may have seen Lisa um, most recently in the Better Business Conversations video we posted in January 2022, which is called Legal Basics for Health Coaches and Holistic Practitioners with Lisa Fraley. And you have, if you haven't seen it, we highly recommend you watch it on Practice Better's YouTube channel uh, because Lisa educates us on the various types of legal documents to consider and why they're important. And that's a really great precursor to today's webinar. Um, so Lisa and Practice Better have joined forces again to revisit the key legal documents for your health and wellness practice. And today we're going to show you where to put them in Practice Better and how to apply them to your client work. Um, so with that said, Lisa, we at Practice Better, as you know, absolutely love working with you. Time and again, you've provided such great guidance and practical information on how to think about the law. So can you share with us some of your thoughts on the importance of laying the legal groundwork? Yes, and I just thank you so much for having me back. I love educating health and wellness practitioners, as you know, about how to legally protect themselves so they don't get into hot water or worry or stress about the legal parts. And so kudos to you for your leadership and the work that you're doing to educate all of the Practice Better users. I'm a huge Practice Better fan, as you know, and I'm just thrilled to be able to do this seminar with you so that we can actually teach people how to use the documents in Practice Better. Because the main reason to have a strong legal foundation is is a couple of different things. One, so you feel safe and secure as you hold yourself out there and do your work, whether you're a licensed practitioner or whether you're not a licensed practitioner, either way, we want you to feel really safe and secure that you know you have a strong legal foundation in place to set boundaries and expectations for your clients, to really give yourself that legal backing. If something goes wrong, you can refer to your contracts or your waivers or your documents to really support you. And also because it creates clarity for your clients. It actually up levels you as a business owner. It actually helps you be super clear about what's expected of you and what's expected of the client as you work together. It can limit your li liability um, and it allows you to be really clear about the basic ways you work around appointments and scheduling and cancellations and refunds and finances. So the legal foundation is really important and we're focusing specifically on documents today in part two of this conversation. Um, but I just think it's so important because there's so many kinds of documents that get a little confusing that we wanted to, again, sort of make this as easy as possible to understand and to know how and where to use them in practice better. I love it, Lisa. Yeah, this is about creating a seamless experience for you as a practitioner and the client as well. So whether you're a health coach, a nutritionist or dietitian, a lactation consultant, functional medicine practitioner or other kind of health and wellness professional, we're really here to lay the groundwork for you of five basic legal agreements to consider incorporating into your practice. And we'll also touch on the importance of each, as Lisa said, and, and how to really um, share them with your clients through the Practice Better platform. So the five documents we're going to talk about today are waivers, client agreements, informed consent forms, terms of use, and disclaimers. Um, and speaking of disclaimers, Lisa, I, maybe we just want to note that this is purely an educational video <laughs> uh, exactly. and should not be construed as legal advice. So yeah. do seek your own legal counsel based on your scope of practice and jurisdiction. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. Well, Lisa, with that, I'm going to turn off my camera and share my screen um, and uh, we'll be able to walk everyone through um, the platform. Okay, so can you see that okay, Lisa? I can, yes, thank you. Excellent. And here we go. All right. So 
As you can see, this is our main dashboard of Practice Better. We're going to spend some time under my practice and within the forms and waivers section. This is where um, most of our um, legal forms are going to live. Um, you can see here that I created a little subsection for legal forms that are going to be relevant for our talk today. Um, so with that said, Lisa, I would love for you to help us walk through the first agreement type, which is waivers. Um, so take it away, Lisa. So a lot of people will at, come to me and ask about waivers and when to use a waiver. What is a waiver? When to use it? Who needs to use it? What it's for? Because there's so many documents that we just mentioned that sounds so confusing. So the key thing to remember about a waiver is that basically this is language that's usually only limited to just waiving your liability. Basically, it can be a paragraph or a short document that's essentially saying that I am not liable for the information that you receive. And this is great information to be sharing with your clients, of course. You do want them to agree to this, but often it can also be part of a larger document we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but for those of you who are running events, live events in person, whether you're um, doing sort of a fitness class. I know a lot of you might be fitness instructors or yoga teachers or combine fitness with your health coaching or the other type of work that you do. And so if you're having someone come to a fitness class online or having someone show up at a live event or a seminar, not overnight, but just a day seminar, the waiver is a good thing for them to sign when they come in the door, just simply to say that while you're here for this class or this seminar, that you, the practitioner, are not liable for them if they get injured or if something goes wrong or if they're allergic to the snacks that you serve or whatever the case may be. Um, it's just a super simple document. It usually doesn't include things like cost and refund policy and fees or anything like that. It's simply devoted towards saying, I'm not liable for the information that you receive, or I'm not liable if you hurt yourself during this event or this um, seminar. So that's the basic waiver. They're usually simple, simple documents. And it's, a, it's not usually what you want to use when you're working with clients in a longer term, but they're great for sort of the quick class, the quick seminar, the quick event. I love it. Yeah. So as you can see, um, when you start off uh, creating a form, um, there is a fast action button under uh, at the very bottom right corner. And this gives you a quick idea of where you can go to start creating the form. So I'm just going to walk through this process again. Um, go to my practice and go to your fast action button. Here we have an option to create a waiver already. So we're just going to go ahead and click on that. And we already have a form name option where you can put in the title. As Lisa said, this is going to be um, specific to an event, let's say. Um, so you can title this, uh, let's say, yoga retreat uh, waiver. And you have a section for that short blurb. That is what uh, Lisa had described um, is important to include there. Um, yeah, and, and this is what you'll want to use if you're doing like a day long yoga retreat or even a yoga class. It's perfect because you don't really, if you're just doing a class or a seminar, you don't need the whole giant um, contract that you might use for an overnight retreat, but you do want it for your class or your seminar. Right. Or a workshop. Yeah, that. exactly. Okay, perfect. And with the waiver, um, who needs to sign it? That is a, a question. That yes. I'm who needs to sign it? Okay, so what's unique about waivers is that they're actually one way. What do I mean by that? It means that it's actually a document where you're asking the client to sign and agree that they're going to waive your liability, that you're not liable as a practitioner, and they're agreeing to waive their right, basically, to hold you liable. So it's signed only by the client. Um, and again, as I mentioned, it's usually designed just to focus on liability. That's it. Um, and so the client will sign the document and usually date the document, and then that's all that needs to be done. Okay, perfect. So we already have a client signature block embedded here in that waiver template, which is great. Um, and we'll show you as well in other forms how to actually incorporate a client signature block if you're creating the form from scratch. Um, but yes, this in essence is the format of a waiver. So I'm just going to click save and exit. Um, okay, so next type of agreement. I think this is the big one, right? It Let's is. Client <laughs> agreement. Yeah. So walk us through um, what this client agreement 
ultimately is, who it's for, what it should contain. Sure. So the client agreement is the main client document that you want to use in terms of a legal document with your clients. If you're working as a health coach, a holistic practitioner, in other words, a non-licensed practitioner, you're not working under your license. Um, this is for people who are basically showing up to provide services to a client and the client is agreeing to pay you for the services. This is not for medical advice. This is not for psychological advice. This is purely for coaching or health consulting services, and the client is agreeing to them. So the client agreement is used by non-licensed practitioners. The reason for that is because doctors and chiropractors and nurses can't actually enter into a legally binding document like this with a client. It's just not legal. You use the form we're going to talk about next. So hold that thought. But here, this is where you want to be um, including the program description of the services that you're offering. You wanna include uh, like everything they're receiving. Maybe it's three calls with you by Zoom every week for the first three weeks of the month. Maybe it's handouts, maybe it's a, a gift that you give them. Maybe it's a, access to a portal where they can communicate with others. Maybe it's a Facebook group. You can have all kinds of things in your program description, but you wanna make sure you're really clear about what services you're actually providing. If you're um, doing functional health coaching work, it might be that they're doing a lab test or they're doing an initial consultation or they're doing follow-up consultations. Um, it just depends on what you're doing Doing specifically, but you want to make sure your program description is super clear. Then you're also going to make sure, and this is a fairly long document, not, not crazy long, but like four or five pages. So you want to make sure it also has terms in it around payment, right? How much does it cost? How much um, do they pay as a deposit? Or do you, can they pay in full or can they pay by installments? What form of payment can they make? Is it by credit card? Is it by PayPal? Is it some other way? Like we don't use a lot of checks and money transfers, but some people still do. So you want to be super clear about how they pay you and when the payment is due. Is it monthly installments? Is half up front, half at the end? This is where you want to be really clear about your payment. Um, a sister corollary to the payment is you want to have a clear refund policy because with client agreements, you are allowed to say that you don't give refunds or that you give a partial refund or that you give a full refund. So it doesn't matter necessarily what policy you have, whether it's full or partial or no refund, it matters that you're clear about what your refund policy is in the document. So the description of the services, the payment, the refund policy, you also want to include language around communication, like how do they schedule calls with you? Do they work with your office? Do they do it online through a scheduler? Do they email you? Do you get on the phone and schedule all your calls at once? Do they do it one at a time? How are the calls um, organized? Are you doing it by Zoom? Are you doing it by phone? How long are they? What happens if they miss a call? Do they forfeit the call? Do they get to make it up by the next call? Do they get the tacket on the end? Do they have to use it by a certain date? These are all the kinds of things you wanna be really clear and specific about. And I know it can sound kind of overwhelming to be thinking about all these things at once while you're putting the client agreement together, um, but that's why it helps to use a document where a lot of this information is already in there for you and you just get to select what it is that you wanna do. Um, and you wanna include information, of course, here around limitation of liability and disclaimers, like a medical disclaimer, to say that you're not giving out medical advice or psychological advice or legal or financial or accounting advice or other advice, and that people need to work with their own doctors and they need to understand that you're not replacing the advice of their doctor and that you are there to provide information and education for them and that you're not providing medical nutrition therapy. Um, you want to be really clear in the disclaimers that you're telling people who you are and what you're doing. So this language is the disclaimer and limitation of liability language so that people know you're not liable, but if you are liable, your liability is limited. Um, and then after that, you have other important sections of an agreement like releasing of claims and notice and termination. What if you decide you don't want to work together? How do you terminate the agreement? How do you resolve a dispute? What happens if someone's not satisfied and you actually need to work it out in a legal way? How does that work? 
Um, and one of my favorite clauses that most client agreements don't include is a non-disparagement clause, which means that you're saying, hey, neither of us are going to say bad things about each other. If this doesn't work out or at the end of this work together, we're really here just trying to um, keep it all positive and professional. And so that can go in the agreement as well. So this is a really important document to be used um, in a client program by non-licensed practitioners like health coaches or functional medicine coaches, um, other practitioners, and you want to have your client and you sign it, both of you, mm -hmm. um, which is the next section, Yoko, right? Who signs yes. it? You sign it and the client signs it. Yeah. And you want to make sure that it's dated and that you get this signed before your first call with the client. Why? So that everyone's on the same page about your expectations, about payment, about your program description, about all the things we just talked about. And you have that signed and tied up with a bow before they start their first session. So this is a big document. There's a lot in it, but it can be done in like four or five pages um, without overwhelming your client or in language that you can do it in very plain English and make it user friendly as well. That's so helpful, Lisa, how you broke it down section by section. And it sounds like this is really the most comprehensive document to protect your business, but also to show up for your client and help them understand what they're agreeing to and, and also what you're agreeing to as a practitioner. Exactly. And I know with at least my um, DIY legal templates, one of the things I like to do is include an expectation section. Mm -hmm. This isn't typical in many legal documents, but I think to the point you just said, Yoko, it's so important to show not only what you expect of your client and how you want them to show up for you, but also you as their coach or practitioner, how you're going to be doing your part to show up for them and to really um, be giving them your best effort and make recommendations and be, help them be accountable and do all these things with a really loving, kind way, but to help them re regain and restore their health and move forward in their health journey. It, it's but for both of you to state your expectations so that it feels more equal as well. I love that. Yeah. So to your point about getting both the client's signature, but also giving your signature, um, here you'll see that I created a client signature block. But we also need to set up your practitioner signature as well. So the way we would do that is to actually go to your settings and preferences. And when you go to all settings and preferences, there's a forms and signature section here. And this is where you would actually set up your own practitioner signature or health code signature and click add. There, it'll be auto-populated with your um, legal practitioner name or health coach name, and you can select the style you want. Um, I personally love the pretty cursive. So <laughs> you have the option to draw it out or upload an existing signature as wow. well. Wow, so very fancy. Yeah, isn't it nice? Yes, it's great. And now you have uh, your signature on file, which is super easy. It'll automate sort of the practitioner signature in forms, especially in the client agreement where it will require you to sign as well. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the forms that we um, started to create just now. And now we can add another signature block here. Um, and it will be um, a drop down menu when you click on this wow. signature form element. And you can select me as the practitioner. Wow. Yeah. So then when you hit save, you'll be able to see the two different blocks available. And Yoko, people will often say, Lisa, why do I have to sign it and the client has to sign it? Like, why is that? Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because an agreement means that you have two parties, two people coming together to agree to the terms of working together. So you both are agreeing to the terms. That's why you sign it and the client signs it because it's an agreement by definition is sort of a meeting of the minds mm -hmm. about something, which we call consideration, but you're coming together to create terms that you both are agreeing to. That's why with the waiver a moment ago, it was just the client agreeing to waive a little bit of their rights. But here, this is an agreement around program description, payment, communication, um, disclaimers, li limitations of liability, like all these things in one document in one place to make it super easy for you and your client. But it's to show that you're both agreeing to that so that there can be no question later that someone didn't see something or someone didn't agree to something. Everyone's on the same page. Love it. That's perfect. Yeah. Thank you for that explanation, Lisa. Um, so I think what we'll do is go ahead and save and exit. 
um, and move on to the next agreement type, which is the uh, informed consent form. Um, so Lisa, not every practitioner uh, needs this, right? That's right. That's right, Yoko. This form is only for licensed practitioners who are working in a patient relationship, providing medical advice. So this is for doctors and chiropractors and, and um, nurse practitioners and physician's assistants and all sorts of licensed practitioners who are working with a patient. These are for registered dietitians providing medical nutrition therapy. This is for doctors providing medical advice. This is for all kinds, psychological advice, therapists, et cetera. Because what this form does is what it actually says. It's called informed consent, which means that you are informing the patient of the benefits and risks to the medical treatment that they're going to receive, and they are consenting to receive medical treatment. So in our country um, and also other countries around the world, we have the right to refuse or to terminate medical treatment. We don't, we don't have it imposed on us unless it's an emergency situation or some other specific situations. So we can decide if we want to receive this work with the registered dietitian or the doctor or whomever. And so we consent to receive that medical treatment. So consent is Again, you're agreeing and understanding the risks and the benefit of the treatment, and you're agreeing to receive the treatment. That's why this is not a form that health coaches use. It's not a form that people who don't give medical advice or medical nutrition therapy or psychological advice, we don't use that form over here in our health coaching space because we're not getting consent to medical treatment because health coaches do not provide medical treatment. So this is purely for licensed practitioners that they get their patient to sign at the beginning of their work together. I know a lot of you out there who are licensed practitioners probably know all this already. You learned it in your medical school or your graduate school or your medical program. But just to refresh your memory, this is the form. It's also often called the consent to treat form. Um, it's, it's, it can go by either name, informed consent or consent to treat form. But again, it's designed for patient consent. Um, and it's only signed by the patient. They're consenting to receive the treatment that you are recommending, the treatment plan, the medical nutrition plan, whatever the case may be. Um, and so if it's possible, Yoko, I don't know if you can change the word client in that signature block to patient. Mm -hmm. If you can, great, because um, that would make it even more clear. Good call. I'm glad you um, pointed that out, Lisa, really uh apt point there. So yes, it is possible to edit that to patients specifically for this form. Yes. And at the top, we can even call it informed consent form slash contract to treat form for patients mm -hmm. to distinguish. Um, now, having said that, I know there are a lot of registered dietitians out there who are like, but Lisa, we call our clients, we call our patients clients, or a lot of therapists will call their patients clients, but we mean patients in terms of operating under your um, physician patient privilege, therapist patient or client privilege, we mean the medical relationship. That's the differentiation there. Gotcha. Perfect. Super clear. I hope um, that's helpful to you all. I'm going to click save and exit. Um, one thing I wanted to shout out before we move on, Lisa, is how you can actually share these forms um, with your clients. So there are a few options there. One way is to actually go into your service offerings by going into my practice my services, and you can actually attach the form to an existing service. So for example, if you've got an initial consultation set up, you can go into your advanced options and you can attach the form that you just created and share them with your client that way. So That's great. Um, just one really uh, simple way to um, automate the process by um, attaching it to a service once it is um, provided to or um, sent to your client to book. Um, See, this is one of the reasons why I love practice better, Yoko, is because you make it so easy, A, to use, but B, to like figure out where things go. You allow that to be connected right from the start. So people, do, once you set it up, you don't have to really worry about it so much. It's already there for you, connected to that particular appointment type. 
Exactly. That is what we want to do at Practice Better is to make yeah. your life easier to manage the practice. And so we actually also have an automation section of our platform. Another way to uh, yeah. set it up once so you can forget about it and um, it'll automatically send to your clients. So when you go to the automations and triggers section, Again, click that fast action button and you can send a form after a booking is confirmed, just as an example. So if you have an initial consult coming up, you can go ahead and click on the, all of the forms that you want um, your client to sign. Great. There we go. So, um, yeah, we've covered a lot so far as far as the forms go. Um, but there's uh, one interesting example that Lisa, you and I have talked about, which is not so relevant to individual services, but more specifically to programs, which is another feature we have in Practice Better. Um, so if you can touch on the terms of use, which is another legal agreement that's relevant here. Yes. Okay. So legal terms and conditions have several names. Like we lawyers use lots of different names for them and it can get very confusing. So what I've tried to do is call this document terms of use to let you know that they're the terms that you use when you're working with a group program or an online course that does not have one-on-one -on -one services in it. Okay. So this is for a group program that you might be offering a small group program. It's for um, an online course or a self-study course or a DIY course that people are, are looking at. The key is that it has no one-on-one -on -one information that you're no one-on-one -on -one calls in the course. Okay. There's another document that we use for a hybrid program, which Yoko and I decided we didn't want to super complicate this webinar, so we're trying to keep it simple, but this is for your group program that you're running. So maybe you're offering a group cleanse, or you're offering a group detox program, or a group jumpstart program, or you're trying to just do 30 days to good health and you just want a small group of six, eight, 10 people, or maybe you want a larger group of 20 or 50 people, that's great. Or if you have a downloadable do-it-yourself detox or something, that is the type of thing where you want to use the terms of use. And basically, this is a longer document longer than the client agreement because what's happening here is people are usually either enrolling through a discovery call or enrolling by going to your website and clicking a buy now button but they're signing up for the course um, you may have zoom sessions if you're doing a group program or you might have group calls you might have a facebook group or some other type of forum where people can interact with each other you might have handouts you might have a group q a session um, you have a lot of videos and audio that you deliver like you have a million different ways you can provide content and so what happens unfortunately you all is that the less contact people have with you in a program the research has shown that that's those are the people who are more inclined to take and copy your work unfortunately because they just don't have as close of a relationship as when you're in a one-on-one -on -one relationship so we want to have an even more robust document here to say hey, um, there's a lot of intellectual property language in this document so that people who are enjoying your course and participating in your course, if they walk off with it or copy it or take it or steal it or swipe it, there's a lot of language in this document to protect you that you can come back to to rely on. So one of the main purposes of this document is to really protect your content. It also has a bunch of disclaimers in it, a big medical disclaimer. Um, it has language around disclaimers relating to technology and security because group programs and things are often held through platforms. And even though you have a fabulous platform with Practice Better, if someone were to you know, feel like their information was breached and somehow you were responsible for that, you wanna make sure obviously Practice Better has terms to protect them, but you also wanna make sure that on your end, that client isn't pointing their finger at you personally. So you wanna have this protection as well. It's an and, it goes together, it's an and. Um, so the idea is that this is a document that your client will agree to when they're signing up for the group offering or the e-course or anything else you sell that doesn't have one-on-one -on, -one on it, and they're agreeing to these terms. This is actually more of the one-sided document, okay? This is more the client is agreeing to your terms for participating in the course. Um, it's not a service so much it's more that you're providing this information and education to them in this course or this e-course and they're agreeing to your terms to be able to participate 
participate in the course. It does also have language in it around conflict resolution and non-disparagement and a lot of um, language having to do with refund policies and chargebacks and things that you might encounter more often in a group program. But it's a one-way contract that they're agreeing to the terms to protect your content, to protect you, to limit your liability, and to just make all your terms of your course super clear. Awesome. That was so comprehensive and helpful. And um, I've noted here this uh, signature block just for the client. Um, so excellent explanation, Lisa. Thank you for that. Um, I do want to show uh, where you can actually provide this form as part of your program registration. Um, so when you go to my practice and my programs, just to note as well, um, programs are available um, at higher tier paid plans. Um, there's the evergreen option as well as the fixed date. And um, so starting with professional plan and up for the fixed date and then evergreen is at the plus and up. Um, just wanted to note that, but um, just to give you an example of where this would um, live, ultimately, you want to uh, attach the agreement within the um, program itself um, to make it easier for registrants to actually get the form when they register. So the way you would do that is go into the program information, advanced options, and then you can attach your terms of use here. So um, again, we're hoping to make this as easy as possible for you to automate the process of getting these legal documents signed. Yes, fabulous. I love that. Um, it makes it really easy when you just go into that booking forms page and you can put the, the right link there. Again, the way to remember it is that these are terms for how people can use the content in your group program or your online course versus the client agreement where you're working one-on-one -on -one with a client. So Absolutely. that's great. Yeah, so Lisa, let's touch on the last legal uh, document, if yeah. you will, that is um, slightly different than what we've talked about up until now. And this is the disclaimers, or what I think you call, Lisa, the short disclaimer. So could you elaborate on that for us? Yeah, so remember how I said that the language in the waiver is about limiting your liability. And that's usually the only thing that waivers have. Well, that language around limiting your liability is very similar um, as a parallel to the language in the short disclaimer, what I call a mini disclaimer. And basically the short disclaimer language is what you might put on the bottom of a PDF or what you might put on your slides if you're giving a presentation or in your say it in the start of your video or say it in the start of your audio or if you have a podcast that goes along with what you're doing or you would use it perhaps on um, the bottom of an ebook or your program guide. It's the short paragraph of language that's a really short mini disclaimer, a tiny short disclaimer that's basically telling people you're not providing medical advice, you're not substituting for their doctor, to talk with their doctor. Um, it's This is a great example here for you that Yoko is showing you of language to use. It's not sufficient to be what you use with your clients in a client agreement or even to have on the bottom of your website. This is really designed to be a brief, short disclaimer language saying, hey, I'm not liable if you're reading my program guide. This is information and education for you. It's not medical advice. Or hey, if you're looking at my ebook um, that comes as a part of your course, this is not medical advice. Or if you're looking at slides, maybe you do webinars with slides or videos and you can have it there as well. So people know that you're limiting and disclaiming your liability um, and that you're telling them that in a really short, brief way so it's not like super long. The way Yoko has set this up is that you can agree to this language here so that you can attach it to different programs that you have, but just know it does not take the place of a client agreement or informed consent or even the terms of use. This is totally different. It's just a short little blurb that you can put on the bottom of your documents and things so that every single thing the client touches in your program does have a little short disclaimer on it. Yeah, it sounds to me, Lisa, like this is more of a reminder than an actual agreement, but it can be helpful and is worth um, considering as part of. Yeah, it's especially helpful to put on your program guides, your documents, things that if someone might show it to someone else or they find it on your home or your desk or whatever, not that we're all 
traveling a lot these days and going to people's houses. But the idea is that, you know, you have something written on the bottom of a document that they're printing off and looking at later to remind them it's not medical advice. Um, and then it, it is a good reminder, as Yoko said, too, especially in initial consultation, sometimes even a discovery call, you can have a dis the short disclaimer there so that people know even at the very beginning of working with them before you've even gotten into a paid situation, or maybe they only book an initial consultation and they don't do the rest of the package, that's a nice way to have a little disclaimer for them rather than, you know, before it's time to give them a client agreement or have them um, enroll in a group program and, and agree to the terms of use. Really good point, Lisa. So I can actually show you guys in a service offering um, where you can upload the disclaimer template that you've just created, as I showed you. So it lives here, terms and conditions. You can have um, as many as you'd like. In this case, we have that short disclaimer um, that is uploaded in addition to the service offering information. So that's exactly. great. You can go ahead and set that up. That way, if you have a discovery call sometimes or even an initial consultation where they're just paying for that one time with you, that one 90 minute session with you or 60 minute session or something, you don't have no language in place, but you don't necessarily need the full client agreement in that moment for this really brief, short uh, session. Uh, so that's one way to at least have some language there. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think that concludes all of our legal documentation. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and bring my video back up. And um, just want to thank you, Lisa, for <clears throat> all the incredible information that you've provided us. There's so much to work with. And um, I know I feel already uh, better knowing that there are distinctions among each of these legal agreements and how to use them and which ones are appropriate for uh, what scenarios. So thank you so much for that background. You're welcome. And, you know, I do recognize, we recognize that this is a lot of legal stuff to be thinking about. So trying to break it down for you and having Yoko show where to use it and how to use it, we're trying to make it feel more comfortable and feel easier and not feel so overwhelming. Um, as you know, Yoko and her whole, the whole team at Practice Better are so helpful and have such great customer service that you can ask questions if you need help figuring out where to put things. And you can always reach out to my team as well. And we can talk to you about the document we just want you to not be afraid or held back in any way. And we want you to have your legal documents in place and up and practice better so that you can just exhale and relax and focus on serving your clients. That's the whole point of why we did this. So. Well said. <laughs> um, so Lisa, where can our viewers find more information about you and your services? Yeah. So lisafraley.com is the best place to go. Um, L-A-S-A-F-R-A-L-E-Y.com. Um, you can certainly sign up for a free 20-minute legal chat with our team where we're happy to answer questions and help you get uh, going. And also we have a ton of DIY legal documents um, that are designed to do some of the things that we talked about today, like a DIY client agreement and a DIY terms of use and um, all the things we talked about basically. So if you need help with the DIY and conform consent, they're there for you to download and to use as well. So, um, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions about any of those. Perfect. And we'll be sending this recording out to our respective newsletters. And so keep an eye out for that, as well as uh, links to more information about Lisa's services, as well as Practice Better's platform. So with that, Lisa, thank you so much. It's been so fun collaborating with you, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much, Yoko. Absolutely.